everyone. Welcome to the show. So I want to talk about what's up with the housing market. It's something that everyone is asking, uh, whether they're looking to buy a home, whether they're concerned about their existing homes, current value. So according to a recent nationwide report, 90% of previously really hot U.S. housing markets, like markets that were doing exceedingly well, they now show a decline, 90% of those markets. And when I say a decline, I'm referring to the price of the homes in those markets all declined in the last half of 2022. So the National Association of Realtors is reporting that the national median home price dropped by more than 8% in the last six months of last year, of 2022. The most hard hit area was Austin, Texas, which had become one of the most highly sought after areas in recent years. Austin's prices are down by 21.9%. That was as of the end of 2022. San Francisco, California also took a big hit, probably due to the massive layoffs in the tech sector, but a lot of factors in here as well. Um, the San Francisco market dropped by 20.6%. Next was Boulder, Colorado. That market fell by 18.6%. And then San Jose, California was next in line. That market is down by 17%. Now, one factor, which we all know in, in the declining prices, is the increase in mortgage rates. I mean, you know, the Fed just went crazy. They were they're trying to tamp down inflation. They keep jacking up the interest rates. I mean, thankfully, they kind of stopped for now, um, but they've more than doubled since that time, since the market was really hot. I don't think we're going to see the carnage that we saw in 2008, though, and through, you know, like 2011, 2012, because for one thing, negative amortization loans no longer exist. They were a large part of the housing crash in 2008 because for most people with a NEGAM loan, the balance that they owed on their home increased every month instead of decreasing as a normal loan would do. And I can explain why in another video someday, but suffice to say, NEGAM loans were given to people without proper explanation. And many homeowners chose to make the minimum payment shown on their payment stub not realizing that they were actually adding to the balance of their loan every month. The other reason I don't see this turning into another housing depression is because of the aforementioned low rates. You know, they allowed so many people, so many home buyers and, and existing homeowners to secure rock bottom payments. And the last housing bust was due in large part to shell games going on on Wall Street. They were taking those ticking time bomb NEGAM loans and they were packaging them together with numerous safe loans, right? So it would be like wrapping, I don't know, <laughs> dog feces, you know, wrapping it in a, in a pretty package, pretty wrapping in a bow and giving it to someone as a gift. Um, and then they were falsely telling the investors who they were handing this gift off to, that these blocks of loans were completely safe and sure bets. And rating agencies went along with this. They were giving them an A rating for the investors, for these packages of loans that they were selling in bulk. Now, inevitably, when the borrowers of those NEGAM loans or other risky loans started to default, the whole house of cards came crashing down. What's clear about the market trends we're seeing right now, though, is that prices are probably going to continue to fall somewhat. But you have some competing themes going on here, which we didn't have in the last crash. Because on one hand, you have low inventory. Because like I said, people just aren't moving, right? They're, or they're not moving at the pace that they were when the rates were really low. So unless someone has to move, whether it's for work or divorce or financial reasons, existing homeowners are like, no, I'm not going anywhere. I've got, you know, 2.75% interest rate. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to go up to like 7% now and buy another house. So unless somebody is wildly wealthy and it just doesn't matter to them, maybe they need the write off, you know, in that case. But for the average person, no, they're staying put. So that would typically put upward pressure on prices because there's not enough supply 
for the typical demand. However, because rates are so high compared to recent years, a lot of buyers have either decided that they're going to wait and see what happens with the market. You know, others are now priced out of the market because of the interest rate hikes. So again, I don't think we're going to see an immediate massive price drop in the near future. And I doubt that we're going to have the number of short sales and foreclosures that we saw in the 2008 implosion either. And just to explain for people who might be thinking, you know, what do you know about all this, Gina? You report on news and politics. So I spent about 15 years working in the mortgage industry before I became vegan and wrote my book and became a health coach. I was the co-owner of a mortgage bank, actually, when the market collapsed. And I also worked a bit in the real estate industry because we flipped houses for about 10 years. So I was both the beneficiary of the last housing boom and I was a major victim of the last crash. So I'll let you know if I see any more interesting news in the housing market. And I do plan to continue what I mentioned a while back um, with different programs that the government is offering to help offset the, the costs and these high interest rates. So I will be giving you guys more information on those different programs in the near future. So thanks again. Take care. I will talk with you soon. Please like, share, and subscribe. Please donate. Please uh, become a monthly supporter if you can. Um, or if not, please leave a tip or a super thanks, depending on what platform you're watching this on right now. Take care, guys. Love you all. Talk with you soon.